So I'm uh, Simon Benville from NRCAN, and I would like to acknowledge the contribution of my co-author, Denis La Richesse from CNES. In the past few months, uh, Denis and myself have been collaborating on a real-time clock combination software supporting precise point positioning with ambiguity resolution. How did this uh, project come together? Well, CNES and NRCAN are two analysis centers that are encoding the proposed RTCM SSR phase bias message for precise point positioning with ambiguity resolution. Uh, these phase biases are currently discarded by the IGS real-time clock combinations done by ESOC and BKG so that users are constrained to doing flow PPP solutions. Because of this, CNES and NRCAN have collaborated to develop a real-time clock combination software that preserves the integer nature of the ambiguities at the user end. And one of the goal of this study was also to show that the SSR phase biases are interoperable even uh, with different underlying estimation strategies. A few words on the software architecture. Um, CNES developed the interface while NRCAN developed the core algorithms for the combination. It was written in C++ and doesn't require any external library. It works in both real-time post-process modes or a mix of both. Now I've just mentioned that the core algorithms don't um, depend on any external library, so basically they can be integrated in any other software. Um, for our prototype to show that the, well, to test the combination, we use the RTKLib to, uh, for the SSR stream acquisition, decoding, and encoding of the SSR messages. Now a few notes on the technical aspects. So far I've been talking about a clock combination, but in fact it, it's more in a clock combination. We need to combine orbit corrections, satellite clock corrections, code biases, and really the new Part of this uh, work here is the combination of the proposed, the content of the proposed uh, 1265 or phase bias message, which contains the phase biases and the yaw information. And the interesting thing about adding these components is that when the clock correction and, and the phase biases are taken together, they create what I call phase clocks, which can be precisely aligned. And this is shown by these simple equations here. We have the um, the clock corrections provided uh, by analysis centers A and B for satellite J, along with the phase biases, in this case, on L1. And this is a function of the combined clock correction uh, timing reference for each analysis center. And an offset parameter, which is satellite and analysis center dependent. And the thing with phase clock is that these uh, parameters have an integer nature. So by fixing these parameters to integers in the adjustment, then that, that's how our phase clocks become precisely aligned. And um, as Martin mentioned, uh, the SSR representation is independent of the estimation strategy. So in our combination software, we opted to process linear combinations of biases. And the, one of the main reasons supporting that is basically to, for quality control. Uh, it's easier to deal with signals that, are not, that do not depend on the clocks. So what's going on inside the software? Uh, there's basically uh, six steps. Uh, the first one is the Y-Lane or the melbourne Vubena solution. So we take the phase biases on L1, L2, along with the C1W, C2W codes, and compute uh, the combined melbourne Vubena satellite biases. Uh, the second step is the orbit and yaw solution. That's just a, a weighted average, not a fancy uh, orbit combination. And um, the purpose of that step is to compute the radial orbit correction and the wind-up correction uh, to be applied to the, to the clocks. The third step is the phase clock combination. So we use the, oops, we use the clock um, corrections along with the phase biases. In our case, we use the I, we make a combination and to form the ino free phase biases. And um, one thing have to mention about the phase clock is they're defined with respect to an, an ambiguity datum, which means that they can have an arbitrary offset with respect to the conventional IGS clocks whose datum is defined by the, the ionosphere-free code biases. So uh, the fourth step then is to uh, align the, the two together, so the phase clock and the, the ionosphere-free uh, code clocks. And the fifth step is we compute DCB solutions using all of the uncombined 
uh, Coke biases. And finally, we make a transformation back to the uh, RDC MSSR representation. This transformation can be summarized here. Basically, we have our estimated quantities, the Melbourne Vubena uh, biases, the Coke phase offsets, and the DCBs. And we also add a constraint that the ionosphere free phase biases are equal to zero. And by inverting the system, we can go back to the uncombined biases and re encode this in the SSR uh, message. Uh, one last um, aspect I wanted to, to discuss was the yaw maneuvers during eclipses. Um, now it's nice because yaw information is contained in the proposed SSR phase bias message. Unfortunately, not all of the analysis centers are transmitting that, this message, so the software is capable of determining eclipsing periods based on Jan Kuba's subroutine. And we have an operator defined waiting scheme during eclipse periods, so we can uh, downweight analysis centers that uh, do not provide the yaw information, for example. <laughs> Let's look at some results from our real-time clock combination. We used um, four feeds, four streams, two from CANAS and two from NRCAN. We processed uh, 24 hours of uh, corrections at a five-second sampling <laughs> interval, and the data was collected on the 8th of June of this year. And it's important to mention in an we assign an equal weight to all streams in the combination. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I said that you know, th those phase clocks can be precisely aligned by fixing the offsets to integer values. So in order to check if our, um, our streams are interoperable, it's a good idea to look at the percentage of fixed offsets, which is what we're seeing here, as a function of time for our four streams. And we see that for a good part of the day, over 90% of those uh, offset parameters were fixed to integers. Then uh, that percentage went down a little bit for the NRCAN streams, and, but then eventually came back up close to uh, 100%. Um, perhaps one thing we, we notice in our tests is that uh, phase clocks are more prone to discontinuities than conventional clocks. And uh, the reason for this is that with the conventional clock, as long as there's one analysis center who provides uh, a clock correction for a satellite, you can in general have a continuous combination for that satellite. That condition is not sufficient for phase clocks. Um, the condition that applies is that you need at least one analysis center with a fixed ambiguity offset to provide a correction. If, if this condition is not met, then we need to do a datum transformation in the software, and that will create a little bit, uh, a little shift in the biases. And in that case, PPP users need to reset ambiguities. Uh, fortunately, this didn't happen too often in our combination. There's one epoch here where five satellites were affected at the same time. And one way to minimize that would be obviously to have more analysis centers contributing phase biases to our combination. Uh, let's look at the results from the combination now. We start with a, an internal validation. Um, we're seeing here the clock residuals from the, um, uh, the phase clock combination. That's for the, one of the CNES streams. We see an RMS of 0.03 nanoseconds, which means that there's a very good agreement between, uh, between, between the streams. We can move to an external validation. We, can, we compared our uh, clock combination product with the uh, IGR clocks. And um, there's still a, a decent agreement, an RMS of 0.06 nanoseconds, uh, which is what we're seeing in the, da in the daily real-time uh, reports by the real-time IGS uh, for the CNES clocks. So we, we didn't degrade the, the product mm -hmm. by combining them. In the positioning, uh, domain, we uh, process station algo, divided the 24 hours into 24 hourly runs, and we resetted the ambiguities at the beginning of every hour. And what we're seeing here, the horizontal error as a function of time. And really here, it doesn't matter uh, how fast the solutions converge. That's not the, the point I want to make. The point I want to make is that we see that the solutions do converge to an ambiguity fixed solution. That means that uh, the rover has been able to do ambiguity resolution with our combined products. If we don't reset the ambiguities every hour, we get the full 24 hours of data, and we see here the RMS after convergence is uh, 1.1 1 
centimeter in latitude, six millimeters in longitude, and 1.6 centimeters in height. And um, that's quite representative of a real-time PPPAR solution for GLONASS, uh, for GPS only, sorry. Uh, yeah, you don't want to throw GLONASS in there. So uh, in summary, uh, Kness and Arcan have collaborated on a clock combination software for PPPAR. The preliminary results show good interoperability between Kness and Arcan using the proposed uh, phase bias message. Now the strength of the solution would be improved if more analysis centers would be providing phase biases. So we invite any of the real-time analysis centers who wish to join the party to contact us. And the source code for this combination will be publicly available in the future. We have made an agreement with, B with BKG to integrate the module into BNC, so we think that the, uh, the source code should be available uh, at that time. And if you have any questions, please contact either myself or Denis.